this, and that should teach you. Speak to Mr. Lincoln, Frederick. Thank you, my friend. The Emancipation Proclamation must go forth to stop slavery. And you are right. I will speak to him before I talk to the government and see what's going on. <coughs> Mr. Lincoln. Frederick. My wife, Anna. Pleasure to meet you. I'm about to talk to your staff, your executive staff. I feel there's some information I must go over with I say something that's very strong, but I must abolish slavery, the emancipation, and I do appreciate all you have done for me, my brother, and all of my struggles. You have been there for me, but I say this. You're depriving my brother of the unconditional right to be free. I am not here to talk about the fascination of my accomplishments or the educational prosperities. The insignificance of my prominence helps me to be more sympathetic to my brother's plight. The abolitionists of the North believe that all the slaves should be free. What do you think? What is this? We must say that the vindication and all this must be said because our brethren are to be free. I am not a Confederate sympathizer. Something must be done. And there's an outrage. And I say to you this. When I was in the Great Britain, many things were brought to my attention. I know you, Mr. President. You are a good man. You have freed many slaves. You are good to me. As God had used Moses to open the Red Sea, so he has used you to put together the Emancipation Proclamation. And for that, sir, I owe you a great deal of gratitude. Right. But I say to you now, sir, that we must talk to the government. And I must say what I feel about my brethren. It must go forth that it must be abolished. I say to you now that abolitionists of the North feel that we all should be free. And I say to you, Mr. Lincoln, as a brother who has helped us, who have been there for us, I must speak these words. I must. You mustn't contain me, sir. You mustn't hold me back. It is my constitutional right to say these things to you. But what is this? Yes, I say. To the Confederate, to the Confederate sympathizers, I am not a sympathizer. General E. Lee, he wants this to take place. I have no dealing with such things, and I will not bring that point up. It's the lawgivers and the legislators that must be stopped with the Confederate rhetoric. It must be abolished, sir. Frederick, speak from your heart, Frederick. Speak from your heart. Mr. Lincoln, there is no pretense in you. You are a true patriot, a man of naturalism. I truly enjoy all you have done for my brother. But I say to you, must, more must be done, sir. The Emancipation Proclamation is starting things off. And I do appreciate that. But I feel that our black brethren should be there, fighting alongside. In the war, the struggle must go on. In two, sir, they say to you, that if we are to be in the war with the Union Army, why is it that they are not paid? If they are in the fight the war, they should be paid. And I know this is something, sir, that it takes time. Please consider. And to the Confederacy and their discriminatory attitude and their philosophies and their technolog technologies, the things that they said, it is wrong! Mr. Lincoln, did you know that in the South there's a prison and a civil prison? The Union soldiers are held there. They are dying from starvation, sir. Yeah. Dysentery is running rapid. It must stop. Maybe we can overtake them. That force. Can we do that, sir? Yeah. And to General e. Lee, I say to you, he is the one who puts forth this rhetoric. It must be abolished, and all the things that take place in that. For well, I say to you this, how can we say that we put chains around a man's ankle? With the other end is fastened to someone's neck. Why is that? Because that is Confederate thinking, and it must be abolished.
I say to you all here today, I had a chance to visit Great Britain. I said some strong things here, but here is what I had to say. I do not go back to America to remain quiet, to enjoy the life of comfort. I glory in conflict. I herefore exult in victory. I know that victory is certain. I turn my back upon comfort and respectability. I might maintain even here, still, I will go back for the sake of my brethren. I go to suffer with them. I go to endure with them, to go under insults with them, until the victory itself is achieved. And this is what I want to do, sir, for my brother. But I say this to you as well. The lawgivers and the legislators of the Confederate government must stop with the rhetoric. It is wrong. I say unto you, it is wrong. <coughs> Slavery must be abolished on the other side of the ocean as well as here. I am not a sympathizer. I'm a man of true rights and freedom. And it must stop. I'm Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey. I am a slave. I say to you, I was raised by my mother, Harriet Bailey. My mother was a slave. Now you may be perplexed. How could such a man talk this way and dress this way as a slave? Hear me now! I do not hide the fact that I am a black man and I am a slave. But I want to make known that my freedom must go forth. And I say this to you, as a young child of the age, my master was with Lloyds in Maryland. Miss Sophia asked me to look after her son, which I so humbly did. I was uneducated, unvettered. But I heard her teaching her son in the room. She was saying the eighth How did I learn to speak? I heard her say, uh. For a long time, I said, uh. I could not speak words. I was unlettered, uneducated. And I said, uh, for three weeks until I said, buh. Buh. I lived by uh and buh. Uh and buh became A and B. I learned my A, B, C. And so, soon, she would read to her son. And I was there with him. And I would listen to all that was said. I was being educated by that way. Soon I learned to read a paragraph. I was proud. But one day, I heard a scream at the front of the house. A slave was attempting to escape. They said, get him, burn him, bring him to the front of the house. Grab Frederick, bring him outside so he can see what takes place to a runaway slave. The slave breaker brought him over to the front porch. I stood there as a young boy. Take his leg, put it before the side. Chop off his foot. This will be a lesson for the slaves. They must not run away. And I swore to that day, when I seen the blood dripping on the ground, I would read. And that I would learn to teach all my brothers. One day, Miss Anna had me read the book. And she said to me, Frederick, you must read Mr. Lloyd. And I was excited to do so. So what did I do? I grabbed my book. And I proceeded to read to him one paragraph. And he said to me, Stop it now! He snapped the book out of my head, snapped me to the floor. He said, you are a slave. You do not read. Sophia, come to the room with me now. I heard him talk to her in the room. He said, well, listen to me now. He is a slave. You mustn't let him read. For if he learns to read, he will run away. You know the freedom within his grace. I listened to all that he said. And I lived by those thoughts and those words in my mind. And I listened to all those words. And soon, he said, he must go. You must send him away to another plantation for a slave breaker. And there I went to another plantation. 
As a young child, I worked day and night. They fed me out of a trough. They fed the animals out. We ate together. We were treated like animals. We walked on clay floors with bare feet. We were sores in our feet. I watched my cousin that hung by his thumbs. He was beat and lashed. The blood dripped to the floor. He fell to the ground. And I swore that blood would not go in vain. And that one day, I would speak for my brother. It would come. Soon, I became older than 15, age of 15. Master said, we will break him. I worked day and night. I was beat by the slave girl. But still I read. I would go to the woods and read books. Their knowledge was growing within me. Soon I was able to help my other brother in the woods. I would read the sentences. I would teach groups of 40 at a time to learn how to read. Pastor Tom said to me, Frederick, you must not read. You must work in the fields with everyone else. But I knew in my heart that it was more to life than that. I had to finish my job to learn, to educate our fellow men. As a grown man, the slave brother proceeded to beat me one day. I had wolves all over my body. I was bleeding. You will not hit me no more, slave brother. He was baffled. Dumbfounded. How could a man, unleaded, dumbfounded, could do such a thing? He fought me. We fought for hours. He sent me back to the Lloyd plantation. It was the best thing. I learned and continued to learn. Master Lloyd said, I can go work on a ship, on the boats, on the docks. But I knew one day I would have to escape, escape. In my mind and in my heart. Now, I thought of Nat Turner. Many of you don't know who Nat Turner is. Let me tell you who he was. He was a slave who believed that all should be free. But he did it the wrong way. He wanted to kill the white man. And you do not do that because you will not win. You must lose your words. So what did he do? What did Nat Turner do? They got a group of 60 slaves together and they went throughout the cities, slaughtering whites. Which was wrong! He must use his words. Nat Turner had people running away. And soon the slave burgers caught up with him. They captured him and all 60 of his men and they hung them. And they, did, they killed them all. And as a result, 100 slaves were killed, innocent slaves, because of dealing with Nat Turner. My master said, Frederick, you must leave because you are strong will in mind. Because soon the slave hunters will look for you because they hear of your words. You are agitated. You cause problems. So he gave me money and had me go away. And I did just that. As I said before, I'm not here to talk about my education. My financial prosperity, I do not. My wisdom is insignificant. But the abolishment of slavery, the rhetoric, must stop. The Confederacy and all that they do, bringing forth slavery, must be abolished. And this I say to you, and I swear by God, it will stop. Mr. Lee. I say to you, sir, the Emancipation Proclamation is a wonderful thing that you have done. And I truly believe that everyone here knows that we deserve to be done. When I say to you, war must be done. Even, we must have people in peace. You're slaughtering a black brethren throughout the towns. It must stop. You've been there. We've been so close. And I do appreciate that. But we must do more. And I need you to do that. Can you help? Yes, sir. I see. I'm sure you know. Here. My brother brought me some information from the front lines. He said that General E. Lee wanted to take over Maryland. Now, why would he want to do that? General Lee said that Maryland had lots of arms. It was near Washington, D.C., across the Potomac River. He said, we will take them by surprise. So what did he do? He got 50,000 troops together. He said, we will take Maryland across the Potomac. We'll go in there and annihilate all the Union soldiers. So he did. And he sang the song, 
Marilyn, Marilyn, you're going into the shadows as he watched in true Marilyn. And he said, when the people see us, it will be fear. It will join us. But it was the other way. The blue coats and all the people looked along, looked at them, the Confederate army in disgust. But did he not know that down the valley, there was thousands of blue coats. The Union soldiers were there. He stopped in his tracks. He said, I'm confused. Were they aware that we are here? Yes, the general of the Union's soldiers, McCollum was there with his soldiers, and they forced them back. Back. They did not cross the Potomac. And also, too, in Tennessee, I say to you, when the Confederate troops tried to come through, the Union soldiers forced them back into Georgia. And this must take place. We must be successful to end slavery. It must be abolished. The rhetoric, the sympathizers from the Union Army, or, or, Union Army, or the good army, but the Confederates will stop. And I say to you, sir, there must be abolished. I do not come here to start a rainstorm. I come here to start thunder. I come here to start a tornado. I want to see the nations quake with freedom. I want to see my brethren set free. So I see all the slaves who are being killed in different countries. And I will go across the country to speak in my language. This must be It must be accomplished. I had a chance to go to a church. The good pastor said, all the white brothers and sisters, please come around the altar. And I saw the blacks gathered, clustered around the front door. And he said, here, come take the communion, for God has welcomed you. And soon, my missionaries moved to the side. He said, come in, my black brother. You know what he said? God does not see color. For when I heard that, I knew in my heart, this was a righteous man. So I say to you here, I thank you, because the North has been very hard in abolishing slavery. And I truly believe that. But the South must learn. It must stop. And so I say to you now that we need to have 100,000 black troops to join the Union Army, the Union Army. So I say to you now that with that, they should be paid fairly, as well as treated fairly, as well as to a ranked fairly. We share the same blood. True, I know this is too much too soon, but it must stop. I am one black man who believes that we can be free, we can exist, it can take place. And to here, sir. Yes. And to here. Do you see? Slavery, discriminatory remarks, all these things, is mind-numbing indeed. The theories of the Confederate Army, the things that they think, the tactics. The things they try, it must stop. It must be abolished. I say this Work. It must be And here, sir, in the Americas, you are a true American dedicated to principles and nationalism. And I truly believe within your heart, all of this can be accomplished. In regards to the Emancipation Proclamation, where all states should be free, and the Constitution of this state, you have done all, sir. And you truly are a man. Noble for worthy all your days. Thank you. Here, sir, within the armies, General E. Lee goes to Tennessee and throughout. The black slaves are there and they want to join. So we will come. Is there a place that we can go, sir, to see if they can join the army and the ranger? Can they all come to Maryland to DC to do this? I will also recruit my own two children to be a part of the Union Army. Yes. as well as here, over the mountains and the hills, the Confederacy. We have lost many battles, but we must continue to fight. And I will take my time to go across the country to speak for freedom for all those who are fighting. And so I say to you all here now, as I say to President Lincoln, that slavery must be abolished. We must think of the innocent 
black people that were killed when they were brought over here in the 1500s. Do you remember? Think how slavery started. Leaving their land, thrown off the ship as animals. For 250 years, I say to you, we have been sold into slavery, into bondage. Now is the time to free our brethren. And I say to you, the North, I thank you for the Emancipation Proclamation, which you have so dearly put forth, to help my brethren to be free. And I say to you now, thank you very much. And have a blessed day. <laughs>